In today's program, I will put the spotlight on an act that was enacted in the year of 1871 on February 21st. The Congress passes an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, also known as the Act of 1871. When you fully understand the ramifications of the past, you will then fully understand the ramifications of the present and you will know how to change the future. And here is where our story begins. With no constitutional authority to do so, Congress creates a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, a 10 mile square parcel of land. The act was passed when the country was weakened and financially depleted in the aftermath of the Civil War. It was at that time a strategic move by foreign interests, international bankers, who were intent upon gaining a stranglehold on the coffers and neck of America. Congress cut a deal with the international bankers, specifically the Rothschilds of London, to incur a debt to said bankers. Because the bankers were not about to lend money to a floundering nation without serious stipulations, they devised a way to get their foot in the door of the United States. The Act of 1871 formed a corporation called the United States, all in capital letters. The corporation, owned by foreign interests, moved in and shoved the original constitution into a dustbin. With the Act of 1871, the organic constitution was defaced and in effect vandalized and sabotaged. When the title was capitalized and the word for was changed to of in the title. The Constitution of the United States of America is the Constitution of the Incorporated United States of America in all capital letters. It operates in an economic capacity and has been used to fool the people into thinking it governs the Republic. It does not. Capitalization is not insignificant when one is referring to a legal document. This seemingly minor alteration has had a major impact on every subsequent generation of Americans. What Congress did by passing the Act of 1871 was create an entirely new document, a constitution for the government of the District of Columbia, an incorporated government. This newly altered constitution was not intended to benefit the Republic. It benefits only the corporation of the United States of America and operates entirely outside the original organic constitution. Instead of having absolute and unalienable rights guaranteed under the organic constitution, we the people now have relative rights or privileges. One example is the sovereign's right to travel, which has now been transformed on the corporate government policy into a privilege that requires citizens to be licensed. An example would be passports. By passing the Act of 1871, Congress committed treason against the people who were sovereign under the grants and decrees of the Declaration of Independence and the Organic Constitution. The Act of 1871 became the foundation of all the treason since committed by government officials. The United States isn't a country, it's a corporation. In preparation for stealing America, the puppets of Britain's banking cabal had already created a second government a shadow government designed to manage what the common herd believed was a democracy, but what was really was an incorporated United States. And conspiring together, this two-headed monster disallowed the common herd all of their sovereign rights under the original constitution. To fully understand how our rights of sovereignty were ended, you must know the full meaning of the word sovereign, which means chief or highest supreme power superior in position to all others, independent of and unlimited by others, possessing or entitled to original and independent authority or jurisdiction. This description I have cited can be found in Webster's Dictionary. In short, our government, which was created by and for us as sovereigns, free citizens deemed to have the highest authority in the land, was stolen from us along with our rights. It is important to keep in mind here that according to the original constitution, only we the people are sovereign. The government is not sovereign. Our original declaration of independence states, government is subject to the consent of the governed, and that's us. It doesn't take a constitutional historian to figure out that the United States government 
has not been subject to the consent of the governed since long before you and I were born. Rather, the governed are subject to the whim and greed of the corporation, which has stretched its tentacles beyond the 10 mile square parcel of land known as the District of Columbia. In fact, it has invaded every state of the Republic. Mind you, the corporation has no jurisdiction beyond the District of Columbia. You just think it does. You see, my friends, you are presumed to know the law, which is very weird since we the people are taught nothing about the law in school. We memorize obscure facts and phrases here and there, and our teachers only gloss over the Bill of Rights. And our schools, which are controlled by the corporate government, don't delve into the constitution of death. After all, the corporation was established to indoctrinate and dumb down the masses, not to teach anything of value or importance. And certainly, no one ever mentioned that America was sold out to foreign interests, and that we were beneficiaries of the debt incurred by Congress, or that we were in debt to the international bankers. Yet, for generations, Americans have had the bulk of their earnings confiscated to pay a massive debt that they did not incur. There has been an endless stream of things the people were not told, and now that you are being told, how do you feel about being made the recipient of a debt without your knowledge or consent? If the passage of the Act of 1871, Congress set a series of subtle and overt deceptions into motion, deceptions in the form of decisions that were meant to sell us down the river. And over time, the Republic took it on the chin until it was knocked down and counted out by a TKO. With the surrender of the people's gold in 1933, the common herd was handed over to illegitimate law. And I'll bet you weren't taught that in school. And now the final snapshot. Our corporate form of governance is based on Roman civil law and admiralty, or admiralty or maritime law, which is also known as the divine right of kings and the law of the seas. Another fact of American history not taught in our schools. And here's another wake-up call for you. Roman civil law was fully established in the 13 colonies before our nation began and then became managed by private international law. In other words, the government, the government created for the District of Columbia via the Act of 1871 operates solely on the private international law, not common law, which was the foundation of our constitutional republic. And it is this fact that has impacted all Americans in concrete ways. For instance, although private international law is technically only applicable within the District of Columbia and not in the other states of the Union, the arms of the Corporation of the United States are called departments. As an example, the Justice Department, the Treasury Department, and those departments affect everyone, no matter where and what state that you live. Guess what? Each department belongs to the corporation, to the all capital letter United States. I now pose the question, how do you feel that you know that you are now being ruled by a corporation? A corporation that operates under Roman civil law outside the original constitution. I challenge everyone listening to contact their congressman and see what they have to say about this. Congress is fully aware of this deception. What this great deception really means is that the members of Congress do not work for us, for you and me. They work for the corporation, for the all capital letter United States. Is it any wonder why we can't get Congress to do anything on our behalf or meet our demands or answer our questions? And here's the bottom line, technically, legally, or any other way you want to look at this matter, the corporate government of the all capital of the United States has no jurisdiction or authority in any state of the Union, the Republic, beyond the District of Columbia. Let that tidbit sink in, then ask yourself, could this deception have occurred without full knowledge and complicity of the Congress? Do you think it happened by accident? And if you do, you're deceiving yourself. There are no accidents and there are no coincidences. Face the facts and confront the truth. Remember, you are presumed to know the law. They know you don't know the law and, for that matter, your history. Why? Because no concerted effort was ever made to teach you or otherwise or inform you. As a sovereign, 
you are entitled to full disclosure of all facts. As a slave, you are entitled to nothing other than what the corporation decides to give you. Remember also that ignorance of the law is no excuse. It's your responsibility and obligation to learn the law and know how it applies to you. No wonder the arrogant corporation counted on the fact that most people are too indifferent, unconcerned, distracted, or lazy to learn what they need to know to survive within this system. We have been conditioned to let the government do our thinking for us. Now's the time to turn that around if we intend to help save our republic and ourselves before it's too late. As an instrument of the international bankers, the all capital letter United States owns you from birth to death. It also holds ownership of all of your assets, all of your property, and even your children. Think long and hard about all the bills, taxes, fines, and licenses you have paid or have purchased. Yes, they had you by the pockets. If you don't believe it, read the 14th Amendment. See how free you really are. Ignorance of the facts led to your silence. Silence is construed as consent. Consent to be beneficiaries of a debt you did not incur. As a society, people who have been deceived hundreds of years, we think we are free, but in truth, we are servants of the corporation. Congress committed treason against the people in 1871. Honest men could have corrected this fraud and treason. But apparently there weren't enough honest men to counteract the lust for money and power. We have lost more freedom than we will ever know thanks to corporate infiltration of our so-called government. Do you think that any soldier who died in any of our wars would have fought if he or she had known the truth? Do you think that one person would have laid down his or her life for a corporation? How long will we remain silent? How long will we perpetrate the myth that we are free? When will we stand together as one sovereign people? When will we take back what was stolen from us? And in closing, I would like to ask the final question. If the people of America had known to what extent their trust was betrayed, how long would it have taken for a real revolution to occur? What we need now is a revolution in thought. We need to change our thinking. Then we can change our world. Our children deserve their rightful legacy, the liberty our ancestors fought to preserve, the legacy of a sovereign and fully free people. If we do not learn from the past, we'll be doomed to repeat it. I'd like to thank everyone for watching the Act of 1871. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless. Thomas Jefferson. Following is a timeline demonstrating when and how a private central banking cartel got control of the government, the people, and the assets of the United States. Each fact is supported by official sources. Source documents are available at www.anticorruptionsociety.com under the tab Source Documents. 1913. With the passage of the Federal Reserve Act, a private foreign banking cartel was made the fiscal agent of the United States. Source Document Representative McFadden Congressional Record, June 1932. From the website of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, quote, The entry of the United States into World War I 
added to the responsibilities of the Young Federal Reserve Bank. It helped finance U.S. military expenditures by becoming the fiscal agent of the federal government. 1920. Congress handed the U.S. Treasury over to the same private banking cartel via the Independent Treasury Act. Source document, Independent Treasury Act, 1920. 1921. The Council on Foreign Relations was founded to direct the media. Paul Warburg was its first director. Warburg also drafted the Federal Reserve Act and became the Fed's first governor. Paul Warburg was an agent for the Rothschilds banking dynasty. 1925. The United States Corporation Company was chartered in perpetuity in Florida by its fiscal agent. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. This company was created without the approval of Congress nor the knowledge and authority of the American people. Note, in 1925, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York had offices on Cedar Street and on Broadway, both cited in the Articles of Incorporation. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. The United States Corporation Company created a maximum of 100 shares of stock. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. The Articles of Incorporation revealed the names of three individuals who held only five shares. The other shareholders were not identified. 1920s. The U.S. Treasury was raided by the private Federal Reserve Bank, who then caused the Great Depression and bankrupted the United States Corporation Company. Source document, Representative Lewis McFadden. Congressional Record, June 1932. 1933. A state of emergency was claimed and Congress gave the President unconstitutional emergency powers. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. On behalf of the private Federal Reserve, President Roosevelt confiscated the people's gold and forced all to use the Federal Reserve notes from then on. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. The Federal Reserve is a private corporation. Therefore, their notes are privately owned currency. The people in the property of the United States was hypothecated and placed unlawfully in a public trust. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. Hypothecate means to pledge as security without delivery of possession. 1933. The Internal Revenue Service was chartered in Delaware as a private corporation. It is not a division of the U.S. Treasury. Source document, Internal Revenue Service Corporate Charter, 1933. The United States is a private corporation with unnamed stockholders. A private corporation is its fiscal agent. A private corporation owns and circulates the currency we are forced to use. A private corporation expects us to pay them taxes. The U.S. CEO, the President, has maintained unconstitutional emergency powers for the past 80 years. Source document, Senate Report 93549 and Continuation of the National Emergency 2012-2013. Quote, all United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers, with the constitutional Republican form of government now dissolved. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. Today, as has been demonstrated, the United States is just a corporate franchised network represented by their all caps names such as State of Ohio. Corporate statutes have replaced laws. 
A corporate statute is a rule of a corporation given the force of law by the consent of the parties. This consent generally requires a signed contract. From Judge Dale, author of The Great American Adventure, page 102, quote, The federal and state governments are not real. They are privately owned corporations called governments, and the law is nothing more than their corporate regulations called statutes, unquote. As corporations have no souls to save nor bodies to incarcerate, they are just dead legal structures. A dead legal structure cannot represent living people nor obligate living people to laws. Therefore, a corporation cannot be a sovereign government. It can only be a legal structure for commercial contracts, which is all the so-called United States government franchise network is. From Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, page 10, quote, All of this deception is compounded by the refusal of ordinary Americans to realize, know, or understand that it is this secrecy and duplicity of privately owned corporations being surreptitiously portrayed as American agencies and government that they have come together to fleece the American people. For more information, read Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, free online at anticorruptionsociety.com. Page 1, Articles of Incorporation, filed 7 7 pages. Page 2, Certificate of Incorporation of United States Corporation Company, filed in Office Secretary of State of the State of Florida this 15th day of July, A.D., 1925, signed by H. Clay Crawford, Secretary of State. United States Corporation Company, Dover, Chicago, Albany, St. Louis, Jersey City, Philadelphia, Los Angeles. International Corporation Company, Rue de la Paix, Paris. Executive Office, 65 Cedar Street, New York City. Page 3. Received July 15. 1925, State of Florida, Certificate of Incorporation of United States Corporation Company. Number one, the name of the corporation is United States Corporation Company. Number two, the nature of the business and the objects and purposes proposed to be transacted, promoted, or carried on by the corporation are as follows. To prepare or cause to be prepared and procure to be filed, recorded, registered, published, issued, or granted in accordance with law, articles or certificates of incorporation, applications for letter patent, charters and other instruments relating to the incorporation and organization of corporations and joint stock companies, to prepare or cause to be prepared and procured to be filed, recorded, registered, published, issued or granted, certificates, reports, statements, applications for licenses to do business 
or other instruments in relation to domestic and foreign corporations, companies, or associations, to provide and maintain domiciliary and other offices and facilities for corporations, companies, and associations, and to act as agent in charge thereof, and upon whom process against or any official notices to any such corporation, company, or association may be served or given and for any other lawful purpose, to act as the fiscal or transfer agent of or registrar of the stock or securities issued by any public or private corporation and in such capacity to receive and disperse money. Page 4. To transfer, register, countersign, issue and deliver certificates of stocks, bonds, or other evidences of indebtedness and to act as agent of any corporation, foreign or domestic, for any lawful purpose. To carry on the business of an appraisal and audit company, and in connection therewith, to make examinations and appraisals of the business and property of corporations and individuals, to examine and audit their books and accounts, and to make reports and certificates in respect thereof. To publish and deal in books periodicals, pamphlets, legal forms, and blanks of all kinds, to acquire by purchase or otherwise, and to hold for investment or otherwise, to use, sell, lease, or dispose of real estate and real property, and any interest, estate, or rights therein, to acquire by purchase subscription or otherwise, and to hold for investment or otherwise, and to use, sell, or dispose of shares of stock, bonds, or any other obligations or securities of any corporation, domestic or foreign, to aid in any manner any corporation whose shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations are held, or in any manner guaranteed by the company, or in which the company is in any way interested, and to do any other acts or things for the preservation protection, improvement, or enhancement of the value of any such shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations, or to do any acts or things designed for any such purpose. And while owner of any such shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations, to exercise all the rights, powers, and privileges of ownership thereof, and to exercise any and all voting powers thereon to acquire by purchase or otherwise, and to hold, own, use, grant licenses in respect to, or otherwise turn to, account or dispose of any copyrights, trademarks, inventions, patent rights, and letters patent of the United States or of any other country. The business of the corporation is from time to time to do any one or more of the acts and things herein set forth, and it may conduct business in the state of Florida, other states, the District of Columbia, the territories and colonies of the United States, and in foreign countries, have one or more offices out of the state of Florida, and hold, purchase, mortgage, and convey real and personal property with or without of the state of Florida. Number three. The maximum number of shares which this corporation is authorized to have outstanding at any one time is 100, each of which shares shall have a par value of $100. Number four, the amount of capital with which the corporation will begin business is $500. Number five, the corporation is to have perpetual existence. Number six. The principal office of the corporation shall be located in the Centennial Building, Tallahassee, Leon County. Number seven, the number of directors shall be three. Number eight, the names of the directors who shall hold office for the first year of the corporation's existence or until their successors are elected and have qualified and their post office addresses are as follows. Page six, Harry O'Coglin. 150 Broadway, New York, New York. Samuel B. Howard, 150 Broadway, New York, New York. Arthur W. Britton, 
150 Broadway, New York, New York. Number 9. The names and post office addresses of the subscribers of this certificate and the number of shares of stock which each agrees to take are as follows. Louis B. Gunther, 150 Broadway, New York, New York, 2 shares. Samuel B. Howard, 150 Broadway, New York, New York, 2 shares. Arthur W. Britton, 150 Broadway, New York, New York, 1 share. Number 10. The directors and stockholders shall have power to hold their meetings and to have one or more offices and to keep the books of the corporation, except the original or duplicate stock ledger, outside of the state of Florida, at such place or places as from time to time may be designated by the bylaws or by resolution of the board. The directors shall have power, without the assent or vote of the stockholders, to make and alter bylaws of the corporation, to fix the times for the declaration and payment of dividends, and to fix and vary the amount to be reserved as working capital, to determine the use and disposition of any surplus or net profits over and above the capital stock paid in, and in their discretion the directors may use and apply any such surplus or accumulated profits in purchasing or acquiring the bonds or other obligations or shares of the capital stock of the corporation to such an extent and in such manner and upon such terms as the directors shall deem expedient. But shares of such capital stock so purchased or acquired may be resold unless such shares shall have been retired for the purposes of decreasing the corporation's capital stock as provided by law. Page 7. We the undersigned, being each of the original subscribers to capital stock herein before named, do hereby associate for the purpose of establishing a corporation pursuant to the corporation law, State of Florida, 1925. Witness our hands and seals the 7th day of July, 1925. Louis H. Gunther, Samuel B. Howard, Arthur W. Britton, in presence of Samuel G. Wood, as to all. State of New York, County of New York, July 7th, A.D., 1925, personally appeared before me, a notary public, in and for New York County, duly authorized to take acknowledgments. Louis H. Gunther, Samuel B. Howard, and Arthur W. Britton, to me known and known to me to be the persons described in and who executed the foregoing instruments, who each acknowledged to me that he executed the same freely and voluntarily as and for his act and deed for the uses and purposes therein expressed. Witness my hand and official seal the day and year in this certificate first above written at New York New York County, New York. Samuel G. Wood, Notary Public, my commission expires March 30, 1927. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless. Thomas Jefferson Following is a timeline demonstrating when and how a private central banking cartel got control of the people and the assets of the United States. Each fact is supported by official sources. Source documents, SD, are available at www.anticorruptionsociety.com under the tab Source Documents. 1913, with the passage of the Federal Reserve Act, a private foreign banking cartel was made the fiscal agent of the United States. Source Document, Representative McFadden, Congressional Record, June 1932. From the website of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, quote, The entry of the United States into World War I 
added to the responsibilities of the Young Federal Reserve Bank. It helped finance U.S. military expenditures by becoming the fiscal agent of the federal government. Nineteen twenty, Congress handed the U.S. Treasury over to the same private banking cartel via the Independent Treasury Act, source document Independent Treasury Act, nineteen twenty. Nineteen twenty one, the Council on Foreign Relations was founded to direct the media. Paul Warburg was its first director. Warburg also drafted the Federal Reserve Act and became the Fed's first governor. Paul Warburg was an agent for the foreign Rothschild banking dynasty. 1925, the United States Corporation Company was chartered in Florida by its fiscal agent. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company, 1925. company was created without the approval of Congress nor the knowledge and authority of the American people. Note, in 1925, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York had offices on Cedar Street and on Broadway, both cited in the Articles of Incorporation. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company, 1925. 1920s, the U.S. Treasury was raided by the private Federal Reserve bankers, who then caused the Great Depression and bankrupted the United States Corporation Company. Source document, Representative McFadden, Congressional Record, June 1932. 1933, a state of emergency was claimed, and Congress gave the President unconstitutional emergency powers. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. On behalf of the private Federal Reserve, President Roosevelt confiscated the people's gold and forced all to use their private currency, the Federal Reserve note, from then on. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. The property and the people of the United States was hypothecated and placed unlawfully in a public trust. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. The Internal Revenue Service was chartered in Delaware as a private corporation. It is not a division of the U.S. Treasury. Source document, Internal Revenue Service Corporate Charter. 1933. The U.S. President, CEO, has maintained unconstitutional dictatorial emergency power for the last 80 years. Source documents, Senate Report 93549, 1973, and Continuation of the National Emergency, 2012-2013. Today, as has been demonstrated, the United States is just a corporate franchised network represented by their all-cap names, such as State of Ohio. Corporate statutes have replaced laws. A corporate statute is a rule of a corporation given the force of law by the consent of the people. This consent generally requires a signed contract. As corporations have no souls to save nor bodies to incarcerate, they are just dead legal structures. A dead legal structure cannot represent living people nor obligate them to laws. Therefore, a corporation cannot be a sovereign government. It can only be a legal structure for commercial contracts, which is all the so-called United States government Franchise Network is. From Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, page 10, quote, All of this deception is compounded 
by the refusal of ordinary Americans to realize, know, or understand that it is this secrecy and duplicity of privately owned corporations being surreptitiously, falsely, portrayed as American agencies and government that have come together to fleece the American people. For more information, read Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, Secrets of America, free online at anticorruptionsociety.com.